If I give you a list of 100 numbers and ask you to sort them, you'll probably tell me to stick it up my bum and set it on fire. Or you'll take the sheet of paper, put it into a computer algorithm, then give me back whatever it spits out and then tell me to stick it up my bum. But contrary to popular belief, this problem will arise every day when you're a grown up. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how to sort massive lists of numbers all the way from the most basic sorting algorithms to the most cutting edge advanced stuff. Level one, basic sorting algorithms. The first sorting algorithm is called the insertion sort. And in this one, it's very simple. Start with the leftmost item, which is eight, and then ask yourself where in the list before should eight go? Okay. Obviously there's no list before eight, so it's just Eight. Next is this five. Now we ask where in the list before should this go? Now look, we've got an eight here. So should it go to the right or should it go to the left? The answer is it should go to the left. So we insert it to the left of eight. Notice that we have to move the eight out of the way as well to put the five in. Next is this three. Go from here. Is it less than eight? Yes. Is it less than five? Yes. So it goes all the way on the end. Next is seven. Is it less than eight? Yes. Is it less than five? No. So we go back to here. Three, five, seven, eight. And then lastly, we have the nine. Nine is greater than eight, so it goes on the end there. That is the insertion sort, and it's the most basic algorithm. Next is bubble sort, and with bubble sort, all you need to do is make a bubble out of pairs of numbers and ask yourself the question, do these need to swap? The answer in this case is no, because the one on the left is smaller, which is what we want, so those don't need to swap. Do 69 and four need to swap? The answer is yes, because the one on the right is smaller, and that is wrong, you naughty, naughty boy. So we swap the four and the 69, and we keep the rest of them in the same position, but we haven't yet checked the last pair, which is 69 and 420, but those are in the correct position, so we don't need to swap anything. Next, we go back to the start, and then we check these two again. These two are in the wrong position, so we swap them around, four and 67 and then we keep the rest the same. And then we have to check this one, 69 and 67, they're in the right position. 69 and 420 are in the correct position. Now we have to do one more pass, even though it's already sorted, just to make sure that there are no swaps left. So we do 467, that's correct. 67, 69, that's correct. 69, 420, that's correct. And boom, the list is sorted. Level two, binary sorting algorithm. So next one is the binary insertion sort. So we take the first number and this is already sorted. Okay, and then we take the next number and we ask ourselves where in the list do we put it? But instead of just doing a linear search backwards, we do a binary search and a binary search goes halfway in the between and then asks it, is it greater than or less than? And so in this case, it's gonna be greater than. So this one's very simple, but then the next one, 95, it's gonna start in the middle and then it's gonna ask, is it, well, the middle in this case would be 76. Is it greater than or less than 76? The answer is greater than, so it goes to six, seven, 97. And then is it greater than or less than 97? The answer is less than, so it goes in between these two, so it's 76. Is it less than or bigger than 95? It's less than, so we look at this one. Is it less than or bigger than 76? So we look at the one on the left, okay? Notice how we didn't even check 97 this time, so it's a little bit quicker than just going through all the lists. So we got 35, 76, uh, 95, 97, and now all of these are sorted, so we only need to sort one last one, 99. Uh, look at the middle, is it bigger than, it's bigger than, look at this one, is it bigger than, it's bigger than, look at this one, is it bigger than, it's bigger than, and now we have a sorted list. <laughs> Next is the merge sort, where you start with a full list of items and you split it up into individual lists, so each list contains only one item, and then you look at adjacent lists together and you ask, you, you start with a cursor on the left of each list, and then you, you compare which is smallest and you put that first. So this, in this case, the smallest is 41, and then after we've eliminated 41, the next smallest is 98, and now these two are in a list together, and then we've got 21 and 93, smallest is gonna be 21, next is gonna be 93, and we've, these two are in a list together. Then we've got 86 and 62, smallest one in this case is 62, and then 86, and those two are in a list together, and then the last on the end is just the 28 on its own, and then we do the same thing again, so starting with a left cursor, left cursor just means pointer, 
pointer on 41 and 21, we compare the two, we can see that 21 is the smallest, so that goes first, eliminate 21, and then we've got 41 and 93, 41 is the smallest, so we put that first, eliminate 41, 93, 98, 93 is the smallest, eliminate that, and now we've just got 98 on its own, and you can see that this is a sorted list, and then next we've got 62 and 28, uh, 28 is smallest, so we put that first. And now because we've eliminated this list, we can just add on this list on the end because this list is already sorted. And so now we've got two pairs of sorted lists. And then we do the same thing again, 28, 21. So we've got 21, 28. And then we've got 41, 62. And then we've got 86, 93. And 98. And boom! That's the merge sort. To do the quick sort, first you have to select a pivot. And we do that by looking at the first and the middle and the last number and selecting the median of these three. The median in this case is 47 because it's in between the other two. So 47 will be our pivot. Then we put the left pointer on the end and a right pointer on the other end. And we start from the left and ask ourselves, is this number bigger than our pivot? And the answer is yes, so we keep it there. And now from the right, we say, is this number smaller than our pivot? And in this case, the answer is yes again. So we keep it there and we swap the left and right pointers. So we end up swapping 36 with 61. So the left pointer moves right and the right pointer moves left. And the left pointer asks, is this number bigger than 47? And the answer is no, so we move it left again. Is this number bigger than 47? The answer is yes, so we keep it there. Right pointer, is this number smaller than 47? The answer is no, so we move it over here. Is this number smaller than 47? The answer is no again, so we move it here. Is this number smaller than 47? The answer is yes, and so now we swap these two. Now we swap these two around, we move the right pointer left and the left pointer right, and watch what's happened. Whoa, the right and the left pointer are the wrong way around. That means that we have to put the pivot in between the two, okay? And this makes sense in a minute. Now our pivot is in the middle and notice that all to the left are less than 47 and all to the right are more than 47. So we've basically split the list in half with 47 on either side. I'm sure you can imagine what we do next. We just pick a pivot for this side and pick a pivot for this side and do the same thing again, but treating each list as a new sub list. And once you do the second step, your list will be sorted because we've only got three numbers on each side. Level four, Tim sort. All right, all right, all right. But what actually do programming languages use? Well, the answer, if you're using Python, is Tim sort. Tim sort was invented by a guy called Tim who looked at these lists and said, well, when the list is shorter than 64 elements, it seems like binary insertion sort is quicker. But when the list is longer than 64 elements, it seems like merge sort is quicker. And he didn't want to use quick sort because when you use quick sort for a list with multiple elements that have the same uh, order, like this here, two and two, then quicksort would swap them around oftentimes, which would lead to issues when you don't want that to happen, basically. So he said, well, if the list has less than 64 elements in it, then we'll just use binary insertion sort because that's the fastest method that we have that doesn't do something funny with the, you know, with the duplicate elements. But if the list is more than 64 elements, then something interesting happens. The Tim sort goes through all the elements and identifies what's called runs. And a run is a number, numbers that are already in order, basically. So 60, 70, 93, 94, they're already in order. 77 and seven are already in order. And 21, then 68, then 91, then 98, all of them are already in order. And then the algorithm has a min run, which is a calculated optimal number, so let's say for example, in this case it's three, which tells us which runs to include and which runs not to include. So this one here is longer than three, so this is a run. Now to make all the runs bigger than three, what you would do is you would take off this and you would make this entire list of four a run here as well, and then you would use binary insertion sort on this four to order this list, so it's seven, 
77, 93, 94, and then this remains the same. Now we have two ordered lists, and what's the quickest way to sort two ordered lists together without doing the whole messing around with the duplicates thing? It's the merge sort. So we do that, and boom, we have our sorted list, or you can have one big long run. And we're imagining in this case that this is a list greater than 64, because obviously if it wasn't, you'd just use binary insertion sort. Level five, radix sort. This is useful for if you've got a list of numbers which are all of a similar length or size, okay? So in this radix saw, what you do is you take the first digit of each number and you sort them using something called the counting sort. So with counting sort, you count how many of each digit you've got. So we've got one, one, we've got uh, 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 one, two, we've got one, two, three, three fours, and we've got one seven, and we've got one nine. And then you do uh, what's called cumulative, uh, make it cumulative. So basically you do one and then add one gives you two, so that's one, and then add three gives you five, and then add one gives you six, and then add one again gives you seven. So we just add that with that to get that, add that with that to get that, add that with that to get that, add that with that with that to get that. And then these, if you shift this to the right, you get zero, one, two, five, six, uh, wait, oh, I've done something wrong. One, two, five, what, zero, one, what? Oh, I've messed it, I've shifted up twice. Zero, one, two, five, six, and then the seven goes off the end. So now these are the indices, indexes of our array which correspond to where we want to put this. And the, the key thing about radix sort is it keeps everything that's a duplicate in order. And how it does that is we just go from right to left and we see, okay, starting with index zero, we've got one, so zero to one is gonna hold one value and that's clearly gonna be the one because that's first in this list here. So we do six, six, one. And then we go right to left, so four is, is not showing up yet because we need two. So the next two is this one here, four, two, two. And then next we have the fours, which go all the way up to in index five. So we've got three of them. So we've got eight, seven, four, four, seven, four. Notice how we're still keeping them from left to right. And then three, four, four. And then lastly, we've got the sevens, which we've only got one of them. So that would be this one, nine, two, seven. And then we've got the nines, which we've only got one of them, and that would be this one. Now we sort them all with the middle digit using the counting sort. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. Then you do it again according to the last digit, and you have the sorted array. Level six, external sort. This is useful for when you've got to sort a list of numbers which is bigger than the RAM. I don't know what computer has only four bytes of RAM. Maybe you're on your old grandma's computer that's literally older than you. I don't know, anyway. If you've got this kind of situation, then you'd have to use an external saw, which works on external memory. First, copy as much of the hard drive as you can into your RAM, and then you sort this small sublist using something like TimSort or QuickSort. So you get three, four, seven, nine, and then you uh, put this back into your hard drive in the correct order, and you do the same thing for the other list. So you basically just sort this and then sort this, obviously. And then you would just perform a merge sort, but sometimes you would need to perform a K-way merge sort, which is where there's more than two merges to do. In this case, there's only really two. So you would start with the two and the three. This would be in your cursor. Obviously the two is smaller. So then you would write the two into the hard drive. Then you would write the three, and then you would keep going with your cursor. Uh, four and four, those are the same and then seven and six, six is smaller than seven, nine and eight, eight is smaller than nine, and boom, there's your sorted list. But if the list was a little bit longer, then you'd have to perform the K-way merge sort, which would basically use heap sort to swap the elements and find which element appears first, okay, and then use that in the hard drive. Eight, seven, five, one, seven, nine, one, two, four. Bogo sort takes the list of numbers and randomly rearranges it, so you've got eight, seven, uh, one, uh, five, uh, let's put the, uh, let's put the other seven here, let's put the nine here, let's put the uh, one here again, and then two here. And it asks the question, 
is this list sorted? The answer is no, so it does it again. So let's put the nine first here this time, then let's do eight here, let's put the seven here, let's put the other seven here, then let's put the one here, then let's put two here, five here, one here. Is this list sorted? No, so then we have to do it again. <laughs> is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so we do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's do it again. Oh, I ran out of room. Is this list sorted? The answer is no, so let's- <laughs> This is the one sorting algorithm that even the quantum computers are afraid of, and I'm also quite afraid of it. You can also have something called the Bogo Bogo sort, which adds another layer of complexity to it, where instead of just randomizing the list and asking if it's sorted, you start with a list, let's say two, seven, eight, one, right? Even just four numbers. Uh, uh, even just four numbers because you have to bogo sort these two. Okay, so let's uh, swap them around into an, a random order, seven, two. No, that's not correct. And then if it's not correct, you have to start again. Okay, now this time let's bogo sort it like that. Okay, now this is actually sorted. So then we move on to the next three and then we bogo sort the next three. So uh, let's do seven, eight, two. No, this is not sorted. So then we have to go all the way back to sorting from two again. So two, seven, let's do seven, two. No, we have to go all the way back to sorting from two again. So let's do two, seven. Yep, this time this is actually sorted. So then let's go two, seven, eight. And then let's sort it, uh, let's do two, eight, seven. No, okay, that's not sorted. We have to go back to sorting from two again. Two and seven, let's put it as seven, two. No, actually, let's do two, seven. Yep, that's bogo sorted. And then two, seven, eight, let's say that's bogo sorted again correctly. So this time we got lucky. And then two, seven, eight, one. Eh, let's do two, seven, one, eight. No, nope, that's incorrect. So then we have to go all the way back to bogo sorting two and seven. Like, comment, subscribe, and piss off.